If you want to jump into artificial intelligence and build things with AI today, how would you start? Learning AI in today's world is a whole different game. Loads of open source tools and models are being created every single day. So if you're someone working in the tech field, you should be building things with AI and not just consume or use AI tools. So today I'll be sharing with you a roadmap as a one-stop solution for you to learn the fundamentals of AI and learn how to build with AI. Even if you don't have any background in machine learning, math, statistics or programming, I hope you walk away with some useful ideas of where to start. I'm Srinath Warrior. I'm an AI engineering manager from Bangalore. Let's get started. So why should we bother learning AI? This whole AI machine learning and deep learning thing has actually been around since 1950. But ever since ChatGPT got released in November 2022, there's been a recent boost in AI. But this is basically generative AI, which is a subset of machine learning and deep learning. Generative AI can now write code, generate images, create music, PPTs, and much, much more. So if you have the knowledge and know how to build things with AI, you can actually create a huge impact. That's why we need more people who have the in-depth understanding and not just copy paste code and build substandard tools. Also, if you're just getting started, don't worry about the amount of new terminologies. We'll break down the process for you to learn. Now, whenever you learn a new technology, you can use this four step learning method that I call TLLC. I in fact use this TLLC framework to teach my team as well. To start with, learn the tools. This is always the fun part because there's always a fun new shiny tool out there. Then you learn the programming language. People spend ages choosing the language and even more time in boasting their knowledge of multiple languages. Now the language is obviously important to an extent, but the syntax is not as important as understanding how to use a language well. Third, you need to understand relevant libraries and APIs that you can build on top of. Because if you understand how the tech world is set up, you don't need to build everything from the ground floor. You can directly start with the fifth floor using libraries and APIs. And finally, you go into the core conceptual knowledge. Spend most of your effort on this concepts layer. Don't get distracted by libraries or tools because they will keep changing. But your core concepts will help you build a solid product and also help you grow in your career. It'll also help you avoid an imposter syndrome. Now, before we apply this TLLC learning technique to AI, I want to clarify something about no code and low code tools. If you're new to coding, there are a bunch of low code or no code tools to help you get started with AI and even develop things like an AI chatbot without much coding. You can certainly play around with these tools to have the first feeling of how things work and what is possible. And you can even build complete real world solutions with them. But there are two main problems with this approach, scalability and vendor lock-in. Once you start using these low-code tools more and more, you might realize that these tools feel like a bit of a black box. They might not be so flexible that you can customize a lot of things. You'll mostly face a lot of scalability issues. And secondly, you're gonna be stuck with a single vendor and you might remain dependent on that vendor for fixing your bugs. So you might get stuck very quickly when you're using these platforms. Also for your own learning, you are only doing level one of learning the tools with this approach. The deeper you go, the better you understand concepts and can build a stable product. So if I were to start with AI again, I would instead build an AI wrapper with some basic programming because it really helps to have a solid understanding of how things work from ground up. So let's look at these four learning levels with respect to AI. You can also download this in a PDF format along with my AI learning pyramid and other learning resources. You can find the link in the description below. Another thing to clarify is that AI development and Gen AI development are different. Gen AI development is when you build on top of a large AI model like a large language model or LLM or generative adversarial network or GAN. For example, you can build your own chatbot, but underneath it, you'll still use an LLM like ChatGPT's GPT-4.0 or Gemini models, but you just teach the LLM how to respond to your users. On the contrary, if it is a machine learning or deep learning case, which we commonly call as AI development, you need to actually train and build the model yourself. You'll still have libraries like Google's TensorFlow to help you train a model, but you will be much more focused on building a model for a very specific task, like personalized movie recommendations or sentiment analysis. While both approaches have their benefits and specific purposes, if I were to start learning AI again in 2025, I would start with learning to build Gen AI and then expand my knowledge by learning to build full-fledged AI models. Let's start with the TLLC level one tools. 
to start AI development, you would need a tool to start coding. Couple of quick IDs that you can use to get started are Jupyter and Visual Studio Code. Jupyter Notebook is one of my favorite environments to start learning Python. You can also use newer IDs like Cursor or Bold.new, but it's actually better to start with non-Gen AI IDs so that you remain in control of how the code flows. Now on to level two where you learn the basics of programming languages. Python is one of the most used programming languages for machine learning, deep learning and AI. So some coding knowledge in Python would be essential for building AI models yourself. If you're already good at JavaScript, you can also manage a lot of things with JavaScript without Python, especially if you're building Gen AI products. If you have never coded at all, then make sure to at least get yourself familiar with some basic concepts like uh, data types, list of data types and the operations that you can do on them, data structures and how to work with them, conditional loops and functions. Concepts like object-oriented programming and how to use external libraries using a package library like NPM. Error handling. Understand how you can write code to react in case of errors. Now, practically, you don't need to write all the code that goes into building a service or app. You would either end up importing libraries of code into your project, basically load the code inside your project and use them, or call APIs where the code is hosted on a different network somewhere and you are simply calling them via their public API requests. With Python and JavaScript, there are multiple open source libraries that you can use to develop almost anything you want. For example, Langchain is a very useful library to learn if you want to develop multiple applications on top of LLMs. Langchain also has a library called LangGraph, which lets you easily create AI agents. You should also learn how to call APIs from companies like OpenAI, Grok, or Hugging Face. This lets you call an existing company service like LLM or image generation from your app and show the result on your UI. Now coming to the most important level. Level four, like I mentioned before, is about understanding the underlying concepts of building an AI app. Some of these concepts are generic application development concepts, while some are specific to ML or Gen AI development. The first concept is Git version control. So Git is basically an open source software for tracking changes in your project, basically managing versions of your project. Version control is essential when you're collaborating with other people in a large or complex project. When you buy a new phone, you would obviously assume that the company that made the phone would have thoroughly tested your phone before delivery. You would expect them to check whether each single phone is super fast, whether the security is top notch to avoid viruses or hacking, and you want regular updates to the phone so that you don't miss out on any new features. Similarly, when you write a thousand lines of code and deliver some functionality, you need to ensure that the software product standards are met. Performance. Your product should be highly performant. Each action should be fast and consume low memory and CPU usage. Security. Your product should be highly secure. For example, only authenticated and authorized users should be allowed to access your product. Also, your dependent libraries and APIs should not cause any security violations and your users' personal data should be kept safe. Legal. Your product should be legally compliant so that you don't face any ethical or legal issues. There are more of course, but this is a good place to get started. Now, some of these standards like security become far more important in the context of AI because you need to make sure that your product is safe and that your customer data doesn't end up being misused by that AI model. When exploring AI, it's crucial to have a foundational understanding of its theoretical aspects. Even at a high level, you should understand core concepts of machine learning, neural networks, and deep learning. Machine learning is the broader field that focuses on building systems capable of learning from data. Neural networks are a type of machine learning that uses computational nodes or neurons to teach computers how to process data. Neural networks are inspired by the human brain and can be used to solve a variety of problems. Deep learning is a subset of ML that relies on neural networks to process unstructured data like images, audio, and text. You can also expand your learning to include areas like computer vision and reinforcement learning. Let's look at the relationship between machine learning and deep learning. Machine learning includes a variety of algorithms and techniques traditionally split into supervised or unsupervised learning. Supervised learning is where the models are trained using labeled data, meaning the target outcomes are provided. Imagine teaching a child to recognize apples. You show them a picture of an apple and say, this is an apple. Over time, they learn to identify apples on their own. In case of supervised, computers do the same. They use data with labels to learn. 
Unsupervised learning is where no target labels are available and the algorithm identifies patterns and structures in the data on its own. Imagine giving a child a basket of fruits without telling them what each fruit is. The child may group similar fruits together based on their shape or color. In the same way, computers use unsupervised learning to find similar patterns in data without labels. Understanding these core concepts are definitely helpful. But practically, if you're going with deep learning or Gen AI concepts, you might only need to build on top of neural networks or LLMs. The reason why you should focus on deep learning is deep learning shines when dealing with unstructured data, like text, images, or video. And neural networks is like a backbone of deep learning. They are relatively straightforward to grasp, but incredibly powerful. Here are some concepts that you'll need in deep learning. Forward propagation is the process where input data passes through the layers of a network to generate predictions. For example, if you give it a picture of a cat, the network processes it and says, this is a cat. Back propagation is the method used to update the model by calculating the errors and adjusting the model itself. For example, if the answer is wrong, say it says dog instead of cat, the network will fix this and adjust how it works. For those who enjoy maths, diving into the calculations behind these processes can be a very rewarding and fun experience. Despite their simplicity, neural networks have revolutionized AI, transforming fields like image recognition and natural language processing or NLP. Neural network architectures. Now, when you stack many, many neural network layers together into a complex architecture, this is when things get really interesting. The neural network now can start recognizing digits, classifying cats and dogs, to predicting the next token, which is the case of LLMs today. This is the architecture behind the large language models. Nowadays, transformers outperform pretty much all the earlier architectures. So you might want to jump into it right away and reverse engineer the knowledge. If you see any gap as you work with the AI models, you would also want to understand the underlying foundational models, text embeddings and vector store. When working with language models, you might hear a very common term called text embeddings. It's definitely useful to understand this concept. So text embeddings are like turning words or sentences into numbers so that computers can understand them. If you really think about it, computers can only work with numbers, not words. To help computers read or analyze text, we need a way to translate words into numbers. This is where text embedding comes in. They convert text into a series of numbers called vectors. Imagine if you have the words apple, banana and mountain. The embedding model takes each word and assigns it a list of numbers. Let's say, for example, Apple has the numbers 1.2, 0.5, and 0.8. Banana has a number 1.1, 0.6.7. Mountain is 0.3, 0.1, Words that are similar in meaning, like Apple and Banana, will have vector numbers that are close to each other. So if you search for the word Apple in a database, the model can also find similar words like Banana or Fruit, just because their numbers are close. Embeddings can help computers grasp the context of entire sentences, not just individual words. For example, I love apples and apples are great might have similar embeddings. So when you type movies about space on a search engine, the search engine understands related terms like sci-fi or NASA because of text embeddings. If you take time to learn and understand these concepts and test them out with real world projects, then it's all sorted. Real world projects. No matter where you are in your learning journey, working on small projects is one of the best ways to practice and understand new concepts. It helps you experiment, connect the dots and strengthen your understanding. If you're just starting to learn Python or JavaScript, you can start by building a simple neural network using a library like TensorFlow or TensorFlow.js. With just a few lines of code, you can create a basic model that performs tasks like predicting numbers or recognizing patterns. If you want to understand things more deeply, try creating a neural network from scratch. Write your own code to calculate how it learns using concepts like gradient descent, and you can use tools like NumPy. Don't just watch this video and forget about it. Comment below a date by when you will complete your first AI project. Let me know in the comments which TLLC level you are at so that I can make more videos specifically for you. Thank you for watching.